Good afternoon, everyone. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, um, Adarsh uh, wasn't able to make it for uh, the conference, so um, I'll be presenting in his stead. Um, I'm a colleague of his, um, at, uh, working at the University of Cambridge. Um, I'm doing my PhD on coupled resonator systems, so this is quite different from what I do, but um, rest assured, I have been uh, briefed on this matter, and um, um, I've had a long conversation with him, so I'm um, confident enough to present this uh, today. Um, so uh, before we get into the presentation, um, let's establish some of the nomenclature that's going to be used in this presentation. Um, what we are looking um, for are particulates and granular matter. Particulates in this case is defined as individual matter in the form of separate particles, uh, whereas granular matter can be defined as an agglomerate um, of such particulates, um, and therefore we'll be referring to them as agglomerates. Um, so the mechanics that um, uh, are, are going through in mean, the particulates and agglomerates are essentially uh, different. And uh, this is due to fundamentally due to the interaction between those particulates and uh, them causing uh, those changes in the in the mechanics. Um, and currently, um, uh, these have been distinguished and quantified separately. So, particulates are um, uh, the mechanics of particulates are studied through the use of AFM techniques, which can be quite uh, time consuming um, and localized. Whereas um, agglomerates are essentially studied, uh, the mechanics of agglomerates are studied through shear testing by assuming them to be continuum um, uh, systems. Uh, what we're looking for is, um, is a way to understand the mechanics and differentiate the mechanics of particulates and agglomerates within the same system or, and using the same sensor. And this is where um, uh, the, the, the right questions need to be asked, really. Um, and um, to understand that, uh, we, we assume that the particulates essentially are on the micron scale. So uh, it, is, it is fair enough to assume that the mechanics that uh, these undergo are also on, on the micro scale. Um, so uh, the thought experiment here is if, if we can use a micromechanical resonator uh, to distinguish um, the, the mechanics of uh, the particulates and of the agglomerates, uh, we know they've already been used uh, to sense particulates and uh, uh, and have been widely used as mass sensors using the frequency shift approach, um, but um, this is this is a new thought, uh, thought experiment where if uh, we consider particulates and agglomerates and how uh, the agglomeration process um, occurs, if we can differentiate between these two processes within the same system, it would be extremely beneficial, uh, especially to the big pharma out there. Um, so what we um, are working with is a simple um, plate resonator that is anchored um, in the center, uh, which means uh, the, the, the nodal point is at the center, whereas the antinodal points are at the ends. Um, we're especially looking at it from um, a uh, an extensional modes perspective. Um, and um, most of the uh, math behind this has been deduced for that extensional mode. Um, so the, the procedure is pretty straightforward. We first load it with particulates and um, look at uh, the, the response of the micromechanical resonator um, and then load it with agglomerates and look at the difference. Um, but again, this is very broad, broad scale. Um, what is important is to understand what difference we are looking for. And this comes across in... Um, in the math behind this. Um, so if we look at uh, a, a physical model of the system, um, and we model the resonator with a mass uh, mu and a stiffness kappa, um, and uh, look at the, the, the surface dynamics uh, by, my, by modeling the shear stiffness and normal stiffness of the surface contacts, as well as the coupling stiffness of phi s and phi n um, between those particulates, um, we can, um, come to the conclusion that uh, one of those features, especially in um, the extensional mode, um, is amplitude of vibration dependent. Uh, and this uh, specifically is, is kappa s, or, or the shear contact stiffness between the particulates and the resonators. Um, and this translates into an amplitude dependence of the frequency um, of, the, uh, of the resonator that's vibrating. So, um, 
uh, essentially the, the harder or the stronger the, vib uh, the vibration amplitude of the frequency uh, that will, uh, of, of the resonator, the frequency will tend to vary. Um, and this is an interesting observation uh, because this also allows us to understand the procedure and the process of agglomeration, um, essentially because of the fact that your know, kappa s or the shear contact stiffness is uh, directly related to the agglomeration process. Um, and yeah, so essentially we, we'll, be, we'll be measuring um, the amplitude dependent frequency of, of these mi uh, micromechanical resonators to understand the procedure of this agglomeration. Um, as for anything, we need experimental proof, and um, here it is, really. Um, on the left-hand side, you see that uh, the resonator, the plate resonator, is um, unloaded, and we have various drive frequency, uh, dr drive powers, which indicate the, the, the um, larger vibration amplitudes of uh, the resonator. Um, uh, it is uh, operating in the linear domain, which means um, intrinsically the resonator is not working in the nonlinear domain. Um, however, when we do load the resonator with particulates, um, and this is just one of those scenarios that we're showing on the right, uh, we see that there is an amplitude um, dependent frequency response of the system. Um, and Although this is this is unrelated to the nonlinearities of uh, the the intrinsic nonlinearities of the resonators, there is an amplitude dependent frequency that occurs due to the contact mechanics of um, the particulates um, agglomerating on the surface. Um, so uh, the the next part was to understand whether we can differentiate between um, particulate loading and agglomeration loading, and this uh, was was done. Uh, by covering the resonator to different amounts of surface area, uh, by percentage as shown here, um, and making the difference between agglomeration and particulates around uh, 20 to 20, uh, 23%, which um, um, has been shown to be where film starts to form and the particulates... Attention, please. Oh. The signal tone you have just heard... Is there... Is that all right? <laughs> no emergency? <laughs> all right, um, let's continue. Um, so uh, in this case, um, what we do, um, excuse me, um, what we do is, is, is um, create a variable which shows this amplitude dependent frequency shift, uh, in this case, epsilon. And um, we look at how this epsilon changes with uh, the percentage of variation um, of, of the amount of particulates that are loaded onto this resonator. And uh, curiously, what we see is, uh, is while we um, can consider the, the, the loaded particles as particulates, um, there's a negative uh, amplitude to frequency um, um, shift. And um, at a particular amount of coverage percentage where uh, we notice that the particulates tend to become films, um, where the agglomeration starts to happen, we see that suddenly um, the amplitude to frequency variation, um, or epsilon in this case, turns positive. Uh, so this is a very um, interesting result and observation because it, it allows us to understand the dynamics of particulates and agglomerates in the same device um, just by tuning or, uh, uh, or driving the, the resonator at larger vibration amplitudes. Um, and um, that's, that's what we're trying to understand. This is a new eye into understanding the dynamics um, uh, between the particulates and the agglomerates. And, uh, this, and to conclude, essentially, uh, this is practically relevant to pharmaceutical companies where it's extremely important to understand, um, especially in drug deliveries, whether certain drugs um, agglomerate um, over time or um, when, when um, uh, provided to um, the patient. Um, and also, this can be um, of great use for air quality uh, monitoring um, as particulate sensors. Um, again, um, Adarsh apologizes that he can't be here. Um, and um, uh, these are all the sponsors and um, <laughs> uh, people who have funded his uh, PhD and are now um, well, he's, he's moved on to a postdoc at NIST, but um, um, I will be um, open to questions. Um, I will answer them to the best of my knowledge. If I'm not able to, then I will definitely give you, well, there is his 
email address and uh, he's more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you.